On a recent trip to the Dollar Tree, I came across this table runner, and I thought this would be a great project to sublimate on. It's 100% polyester, so that's perfect. It also measures 12 inches wide by 72 inches long. And I like how it has this 45 degree uh, angle at the bottom. But as I look through the different graphics that I have on my computer, I didn't see anything that was really suitable to put in that particular space. However, I do have a collection of PNG elements that I can drag into Photoshop and compile my own unique design. So that's what I'll be using for this project. The next step is to decide how big do I need to make this. So I'm just going to verify that this table runner is 12 inches across. Then I'm just going to place an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper right into you know approximately the center and this gives me a nice visual as to how big I should make my design. So I think 8 inches across would be perfect and that would give me a couple of inches of a margin on each side of the table runner. So now that that's all decided, let's go into Photoshop and I'll show you how I make my design. Okay, so I, I'm in Photoshop. You can use any graphics program that supports PNG file format. I've gone ahead and created an 8.5 by 11 document, so that should, you know, handle my 8 inch uh, graphic for this project. And the graphics that I'm using, I purchased this bundle from designbundles.net. It's a watercolor collection, it's absolutely beautiful. It's called Give Thanks and has 40 individual PNG elements. So I'll have lots of things to choose from to compose my own original design. So I have that folder open here to the side and my plan is just to click on these individual items and drag and drop them onto the canvas. But before I do that, I'd like to set myself up some guidelines. So the first thing I'm going to do is just click on add new layer, go over to the drawing tools and select the rectangle tool. I've got the fill set to nothing and then I have an outline or stroke set to 0.5 millimeters. So I'm going to hold down my mouse, and I'm sorry, the shift key, and then with my mouse, drag out a box that is eight inches. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but just fairly close. All right. Now that I've got that drawn, I'm going to go out to one of the corners and you can see the mouse changes into the transform or rotate function. So again, hold down my shift key, and with my mouse, just drag that up to the 45 degree angle and click on the check mark. With that layer still selected, hold down my shift key, select the background, go ahead and center that box on the page and then align it up to the bottom. So when you notice here, this goes off the top. So this top half of the document here, I'm not concerned with. It's just this bottom part. I want this 45 degree angle and that point to line up at the bottom of the page and this will help me compose my design. So now I, all I need to do is just start dragging and dropping these elements onto the page. So I'll start with this turkey. And again, this is just a rough um, outline of how your design is going to look. So I'll put that there. And then I'll scroll down and my table runner is that gold color, so I'll probably stay away from this color and go more in a deeper orange. So let's see, I think I saw a nice darker pumpkin here. And then maybe we'll pick this nice green one. So you get the idea here. You're just going to start dragging and dropping these elements onto the page and building up your new design. So I'm not going to go through the whole design here. I'll show you the finished document. This is the design that I came up with. So I've got some leaves behind the turkey, a variety of pumpkins, gourds, and then some <clears throat> apples and just tapered my design down here and here to give me that 45 degree look. So now that this is done, I'm just going to save the document in, in the Photoshop format. That way I can always go in and edit it. Okay, so I've already done that. So the next step now is just to go ahead and send this off to the printer. But obviously I want to delete or remove those guidelines. So to do that, I just go down to the layer that they're on. 
and I can click on the eyeball and they disappear. So in this particular project, I don't need to save it as a JPEG or a PNG file. This one is just ready to go. So I will go ahead and send this off to my printer. I do want to give you a tip though. If you saved it as a JPEG at this point, you will have this white background to contend with. If you want to save it as a PNG file, you just go ahead <clears throat> and click on the background, remove that, and then this checkerboard pattern in Photoshop indicates transparency. So I would probably save this as a PNG file. That way, if I decided that I wanted to make maybe place card holders for you know the Thanksgiving meal or make a nice card, I can go ahead and add a nice background to this. So that's something to consider. And again, at this point, you would just go ahead and say save as and then PNG file. So I thought I would just make that note before I go ahead and print this. So here's the image I just printed and you can see that it does look faded and that is the way that sublimation ink looks before it's pressed. So a tip that I have to avoid getting the imprint of the paper onto the fabric is tear away that excess paper. This gives it a nice irregular edge and it has some different thicknesses to it because that paper is quite thick so you're pulling away different layers. So just take your time with this and just get as close to the edge of the print as you can without actually tearing into the print. And I found um, using this technique and then also a light pressure on the heat press can really help avoid getting that imprint of the paper onto the fabric. Because if you've ever experienced that before, you know that it can be really hard to get rid of that. Sometimes you just can't. So that may take uh, a little bit of practice to get that just right. I really like this graphic package. The images are just beautiful, that nice watercolor effect to them. And this table runner is 72 inches long. So there is plenty of room if you decided you wanted to sublimate additional images on there or you could put um, some wreaths or circles along the center of it and use those as placeholders for candles or a centerpiece. I think that would look really nice. So now I need to decide how far up from that bottom point do I want to place the image because I've got the other side to do and I would like them to be the same so or as close as possible. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use my ruler uh, to place this design and then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So that's probably a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And then I'm just going to eyeball the centering of it. And I have used a lint roller on the fabric to get rid of any lint or dust on there. And I will remove the packaging that's on the top of the table runner. So I'm just securing this in place with some heat tape. And then I will take this to the heat press. So this is how I prepare my heat press for this project. I have some fabric that is ironing board material and I have half inch foam underneath it. And I've just covered the bottom part of my heat press with this, and this will act as a pressing pillow. And then I'm just putting a piece of blowout paper on top of that just to protect the, the fabric. And then I'll go ahead and put the table runner. And I have my heat press set at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. and another piece of paper on top, and I have light pressure on my heat press. So we'll let that go for 60 seconds, and then we'll see how it looks.
All right, so let's open up that heat press and have a look. Now this fabric has a nice shimmer to it and it does have a pattern kind of woven in there. So I'm hoping this is going to enhance the design. Wow, that looks really nice. I like the colors on there. I like the sheen. You know, it's got a nice shimmer to it. And like I said, this uh, table runner is 72 inches long, so there's lots of opportunities for more sublimation. You could put uh, a saying on there or a place for a centerpiece or candle holders. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and hopefully learned some new techniques. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you choose to do so. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos are available. I hope you all have a great fall and thanks for watching.